just ahead on CTV News. Take a look at these long line of cars behind me. Now the county is helping these residents prep for Tropical Storm Debbie. I'm Katera Jones. I'll have everything you need to know coming up on CTV News. Calling all seafood lovers. Did you know there's a whole week in honor of these little guys here, oysters? I've got the whole story for you coming up on CTV News. Plus, former Governor Larry Hogan is back in the county. Those stories and more on CTV News, starting now. Good evening, it's Thursday, August 8th. I'm Michaela Newton. Thanks so much for joining us for CTV News. Well, you're going to want to make sure you keep those umbrellas and rain boots handy because the remnants of Tropical Storm Debbie is on the way. But to help residents prepare, the county is handing out thousands of sandbags. CTV's Katera Jones is at one of the distribution sites with more. As the Washington metro region braces itself for Tropical Storm Debbie, right here in Prince George's, the county has already begun offering sandbags to residents. I want you to take a look over here. You can see a long line of cars waiting to get sandbags. Now, the sandbag distribution will run beginning today through Saturday, August 10th residents can pick up the sandbags at three locations operated by the Department of Public Works and Transportation, which include the Annadale facility in Beltsville, the Brandywine facility in Brandywine, and right here at the DRC Road maintenance facility in Forestville. On hand, we had about 10,000 that we started out with, and we tried to evenly split that out between the three locations that we reported upon earlier to kind of do an even split. What we've learned is that people wants to people want to come to a, a the central location and so what we're doing we're trying to level set and distribute some of those sandbags to here but of course the interest is so great and uh, we're looking to uh, bring more here and produce as well so we were going to run in some additional shifts uh, tonight not only will people be responding to the event as you see it's already started to rain and what we'll do is we'll produce sandbags simultaneously so we have some more supply tomorrow People can help by looking at some of the stormwater infrastructure next to their homes and their easements, if they can go ahead and try to alleviate, alleviate some of the debris that's in that. Also, before the storm even happens, we have our 311 system that people can call into, and then uh, we will be able to come out and respond. Now, forecasters expect that Tropical Storm Debbie will bring heavy rain, thunderstorms, and very strong winds to the region. Due to the very heavy rain, drivers may experience flooded roadways. Remember, it is very dangerous to drive through flooded roads. And as we always say, turn around, don't drown. And residents should keep in mind that the sandbags here are free. All you have to do is show proof that you live right here in Prince George. Gorgeous. Katera Jones, CTV News. All right, Katera, thanks so much. Well, officials say each sandbag weighs about 40 to 50 pounds, and a sandbag giveaway will continue this Friday and Saturday from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. Well, Prince George's police have charged three individuals in connection with the fatal shooting that took place Tuesday afternoon. The adult suspect is 25-year-old DeAndre Boyd. Him along with two 16-year-old males are charged with the murder of 38-year-old Fernando Alvarenga Cuellar. Now, both juveniles are being charged as adults, but this incident happened around 2.35 p.m. on Tuesday. Officers responded to the 4300 block of Ridgecrest Drive and found the victim outside with serious gunshot wounds. He later died at the hospital. Meanwhile, police have charged a man in connection with a fatal stabbing in Beltsville Monday night. The suspect is 39-year-old Francisco Ayala Alvarenga of College Park. Now, around 11 p.m., officers responded to Baltimore Avenue for the report of an unresponsive man. On the scene, they located the victim outside suffering from stab wounds and was later pronounced dead. Now, a preliminary investigation revealed that Ayala Alvarenga knew the victim prior to stabbing him during an argument. Investigators are working to identify the victim so his family will be notified. But anyone with information on this case is asked to call the homicide unit at 301-516-2515. 
And tonight we're bringing you an important update following a tragic event in Silver Spring. A deadly fire last December claimed the life of Melanie Diaz at the Arrive apartment building, and it sparked a significant change in tenant fire safety regulations in Montgomery County. Now, the Montgomery County Council passed legislation aimed at strengthening tenant protections. Montgomery County Executive Mark Elrich, alongside other Boss. officials, and Good Melanie Good Diaz's Boss. parents were in attendance. Look, my daughter used to be saying, he stayed there and said, Hobby, hobby your family every single day and tell them how much you love them. Because you don't know when it's going to be the last time you tell them how much you love them. Thank you for all the support for this bill. Also, thank you, Kay, for all your, your own, to make this, this bill possible. And this bill requires landlords to keep their tenants informed about crucial fire safety measures, insurance coverage, and building maintenance issues. Now, reproduct reproductive freedom is on the ballot in Maryland this November, and advocates from both sides of the abortion debate say Vice President Kamala Harris becoming the presidential nominee is energizing voters. Maryland is thought to be a safe bet for passing the ballot initiative that will preserve abortion rights in the state constitution. But abortion opponents say Harris's nomination intensifies their effort to combat the initiative. However, polling experts say they doubt Harris will have a significant impact on the outcome of the ballot measure. And former Governor Larry Hogan visited the Iron Workers Union in Prince George's County. Hogan met with union workers discussing union projects around the county, apprenticeship opportunities, and how his campaign plans to help union workers in the state. Take a listen. Well, we were just very proud to uh, have been invited to come out and meet with the iron workers. And, uh, you know, we've been to a number of un unions around the state. Uh, our goal is to try to put more people to work. Uh, and uh, see, we got to meet some of the apprentice, uh, go people going through the apprenticeship program, and uh, they're doing great work. And we're, you know, we both have the same goal of putting more people into jobs uh, and just talk about issues of uh, what we might be able to do to help from Washington. And interested students can also learn and earn college credit through the Iron Workers five-year apprenticeship program. Well, it's National Oyster Week, and here in Maryland, we love our seafood, but years of over-harvesting have led to a decline in the oyster population. Mariah Gillette is at Grilled Mark Steakhouse and Raw Bar in College Park, where they serve up oysters dozens of ways and give back to the Chesapeake Bay. Well, I'm here, and I've got a great East Coast delicacy, oysters from the Chesapeake Bay. But did you know after you enjoy this, it goes back to the Chesapeake Bay and benefits the oyster population? We go through quite a bit as a uh, raw bar um, through all of our locations. We basically will, will shuck the oysters. We'll sell anywhere from, I'd say 10 to 20 cases a week. So, you know, it's anywhere from 1,000, 2,000 oysters sometimes. And it's very important for us to give it back and, and re-recycle them. Oysters play a vital role in the Chesapeake Bay ecosystem. But today, the oyster population is estimated to be less than 1% of its former glory. The natural nitrogen filterers once filtered the entire bay in just three to four days. Now, the process takes nearly a year. The Oyster Recovery Partnership is hoping to reverse that. By working with restaurants like Grill Marks and College Park, oyster shells can be saved for the partnership to use in its recovery process. We talk about it kind of uh, in terms of from plate to reef. After you enjoy your seafood tower or oysters Rockefeller, partner restaurants set aside the oyster shells for ORP to collect. The shells go through a year-long process to age them and sun off any bacteria. ORP partners with the University of Maryland Hornpoint Lab down in Cambridge. They actually breed oysters to produce oyster larvae. And then um, the shell that we collect from restaurants and the larvae that they produce come together in a, a, a setting tank on a pier. The oyster babies, called spat, attach to the shells for life. Then ORP takes the newly formed spat and shell out to the Chesapeake and drop them off in their new home. 
it's very important to, re to revitalize our waterways for also the, the watermen that harvest it and then for the, just preparing for the future of our oyster program to make sure that we are able to continue what we do in the restaurant. Well, National Oyster Week ends on August 11th, so make sure you make it out and try one of these great restaurants like Grill Marks or one of the many other locations around the DMV that are participating in this great week. I'm Mariah Jalad from CTV News. Cheers. All right, Mariah, thanks so much. You can find a full list of participating restaurants and the oyster specials they're serving up this week by visiting oysterrecovery.org slash now. And you're watching CTV News. I'm Michaela Newton. Coming up, it's an exciting time as summer school students prepare to celebrate their graduation. Stick around after the break. We'll share all of the details of this special commencement event. The climate that we're operating under has everyone on the defensive. You see a person and you automatically put them in a box and say, well, this is what this person should be like. All of this ostracizing people, what are we afraid of? We're called to love one another. It can't be, I reject you as a person. This country's been through so much. It's people has been through so much. Why can't we fix this? Do we have issues we have to deal with? Yes, we do. But we're not going to be able to deal with them if we're fighting and yelling at each other and not listening. Yeah, she has an accent. Oh, God, she dressed funny. But we're talking the same thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we're all concerned about our children, we're concerned about the world we live in. A lot of people wouldn't even think we should be here talking to each other, but I'm sorry, I disagree. When we have the food we need, we are at our best. We push further. We rise higher. We unlock our full potential. When we are at our best, we have more to offer the world around us. When we have the food we need, we make our communities stronger. Together, we can help everyone get the food they need to thrive. Join the movement to end hunger at feedingamerica.org slash act now. Welcome back. Just yesterday, we shared some concerning news about 87-year-old Jose Venegas, who had gone missing in Hyattsville, but we have some great news to share. Prince George's County Police have confirmed that Mr. Venegas has been found safe and is in good health. Well, the state's Department of Budget and Management is taking steps to cut employee prescription costs. Yesterday, the board approved a contract with MedImpact Healthcare Systems to provide pharmacy benefits for state employees, retirees, and welfare benefit plans. The initial contract is worth over $1.3 billion with optional two-year extensions, potentially raising the total to more than $2.4 billion over seven years. But there's good news. This contract is expected to save the state $1 million in 2025, $12 million in 2026, and a whopping $22 million in 2027. And listen up, candidates are aggressively fundraising ahead of Election Day, and that means that scammers can easily take advantage by sending out illegitimate links to fake donation sites. And the scammers might target you through social media or by posing as a political action committee. Now, to get ahead of it, go directly through a candidate's website to make a donation and check that any political action committee you donate to is officially registered. Now, if you do fall victim to any of these scams, report it to your local FBI office or to the Internet Crime Complaint Center. And a big-name retail store is planning for some closures. Big Lots will be closing 315 stores nationwide. The company will also be updating loan terms to reduce their credit limit and hike interest rates. Now, this comes after they reported a net loss of $205 million for the quarter ending in early May. Big Lots plans to support the employees impacted by the closures by accepting transfer requests to other locations. And the five locations closing in Maryland are Bowie, Glen Burnie, Laurel, Lexington Park, and Ricerstown. 
And Prince George's Co County Public Schools held summer graduation ceremonies early today. Celebrate summer graduations set. have students who Isaac weren't able to walk another Rose chance to Victoria. celebrate their accomplishments. Mohammed now the Dan. ceremonies were held at Dr. Henry A. Wise Mohammed Jr. High School. Will the class of 2024 please stand? <laughs> On the count of three, move your tassels from right to left. Now, wait a minute. On the count of three now. One, two, and three. Turn your tassels. Congratulations, class of 2024. You have now officially graduated. And congratulations to all of the summer school graduates. And so to come on CTV News, Prince George's County is home to thousands of black owned businesses. After the break, we're joined by Kenneth White, president and CEO of Maryland Black Chamber of Commerce. He's talking to us about the upcoming Black Business Soiree. Stay tuned. Only one in five people with disabilities, including those with autism, are employed, despite many having the skill set and desire to work. Why? Outdated stigmas and beliefs. So let us make it easy. This is a job for someone with autism. This is a job for someone with autism. So is this. That job? Also perfect. Businesses value diversity, but sometimes overlook the unique strengths and abilities of the autism community. Introducing WIN, the Workplace Inclusion Now program by Autism Speaks. We bridge the gap and help businesses lead the way in inclusive hiring. Yes, these are all jobs for someone with autism. To learn more and lead the way in inclusive hiring, Go to AutismSpeaks.org slash win. Yep, that job too. I'm a firefighter. A teacher. I'm a farmer. I'm a barber. A waitress. A mom. We're all part of your community. Every day we move in and out of each other's busy lives. It's easy to take for granted all the little moments that make up our every day. Some are good, others not so much. But that's life. It's when you experience a moment of uncertainty, something or someone's behavior that doesn't seem quite right. These are the moments to take a pause. Because if something doesn't feel right, it's probably not. It's not about paranoia. Or being afraid. It's about standing up and protecting our communities. One detail at a time. Because a lot of little details can become a pattern. We. 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 We trust our instincts. Just like you should. Because only you know what's not supposed to be in your everyday. So protect your everyday. If you see something suspicious, say something to local authorities. Well, the month of August is recognized as Black Business Month. It's time to acknowledge and appreciate Black-owned businesses across the nation. And all they represent in the counties, uh, the country's continuous strive for diversity and equality. Now, 31% of businesses in Maryland are Black-owned, and the Prince George's County Economic Development Corporation is partnering with the Maryland Black Chamber of Commerce for a summer soiree networking event. So joining us in the studio today is Kenneth White, president of the Maryland Black Chamber of Commerce. Mr. White, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for having us. All right, so you have an extensive career in kind of business and economic development. Um, what would you say would be the hardest part about black people trying to own their own business? Access to capital is always a major issue. And I think today, um, Access to government contracting opportunities. You know, are we meeting quotas? Are, black, are the black-owned businesses um, getting the opportunity to um, to get these contracts? So that's that continues to be a struggle um, in Maryland and nationwide. And tell me a little bit. Um, you were the senior vice president and relationship manager for Sandy Spring Bank. Tell me a little bit about some of that experience and what you saw when you were working there. So, and that's a great question. So, I've, I was in that space for 40 years. So. I'm very familiar with businesses coming and either not being prepared, not having the resources, and th therefore not getting access to capital. So what I strive to do with the Chamber, and we have a lot of programming, a lot of training, a lot of um, events, and that's to make sure that folks are prepared, i.e., many years ago when we talked about government contracting. 
folks say, well, we didn't, have any, we didn't have any qualified folks. We want to make sure people are qualified, they understand the certification processes, they understand what the proposal processes look like, they're in the room with the people, access the capital the same way. Make sure they understand what financial institutions are looking for and making sure they understand all the opportunities or options that are out there. Banks, non-banks, you know, uh, one of our partners in this upcoming event, FSC First, they have 14 loan programs. Do people know about these 14 loan programs? So it's access to capital, understanding the prerequisites for getting capital, and understand your options for getting capital. Yeah, and I was going to ask you about some of those resources that the Chamber um, offers to people, and how can people go ahead and apply for some of those programs or resources? Right, so um, we have a database, and so we do um, training like on a regular basis. I, we do at least two programs a, a, a week. Um, so sign up, come visit our website, look at all the different programs. We do everything from government contracting to access to capital to Microsoft to, to Google. So um, as we have a partnership with the SBA, they do financial literacy for us on um, once a month. So we have a lot of programming out there to help and assist small businesses. And talk to me a little bit about getting loans, gaining trust, and some of that customer retention. Um, are those some of the hardships that black people face when it comes to you know, getting um, capital? Yes, and again, um, I, I reference um, understanding your options. A lot of people, and I learned this many years ago because I was a small business owner at one point, a lot of people make the mistake of they go to the bank that they've been banking with since they were a kid or the bank that's closest to their home or the bank that they opened their account when they got their first job. And so banks have different cultures, different likes, different appetites. So you need to shop around and make sure that the financial institution, you know, the financial institution that's good for your home loan may not be the financial institution that's good for your startup or your expansion or your business acquisition. So you really need to um, have that conversation, have that dialogue and kind of shop around for the perfect match. Mm. And what business or what bank do you think is the best bank to go oh, to? Oh, you're trying to get me in trouble. <laughs> I, I'm going to say it differs. And okay. it, depends on, it depends on your business and what you're looking for, i.e. a lot of people go to big banks because they're national and they're in every corner and they have a lot of, you know, pro products like international products. But then some people like little, small, your smaller community banks because you can call somebody, you can show up and you can meet and have one-on-one mm -hmm. -on -one dialogue. So it depends on where you are in your business, what your actual business needs are, and just kind of and, and understand what the relationship looks like. We all, we all, we're all looking for different things in a relationship. So mm -hmm. figure out what that banking relationship um, needs to look like for you and the success of your business. Absolutely. And lastly, tell me about the Summer Soiree networking event. Are there tickets? How do we get uh, to go? Great, great. Great. So we have the um, Black Business Month Summer Soiree coming up on August 29th um, here in Prince George's County, Atlanta. And it's a partnership, a collaboration between the Maryland Black Chamber of Commerce, Prince George's Economic Development Corporation, Prince George's Financial Services Corporation, Prince George's Chamber of Commerce, and um, by County Business Roundtable. And so um, we're coming together. It's, it's kind of the end celebration of the month. During the month, we're all highlighting and celebrating black businesses within Prince George's County. So we're um, profiling them and putting them on our, in our newsletters and our social media posts and such. And then we end that celebration by a big, network, mm. big, net, big networking event um, that allows, we're expecting over 200, fo 200 folks mm. to come together to network, to um, learn about and see the thriving business population, black business population in Prince George's County possibly create um, collaborative partnerships mm -hmm. and opportunities to do business with each other. And um, each of us have um, tickets on our websites, mm -hmm. and they're $25. Yeah. And so visit our website. You can visit the Maryland Black Chamber of Commerce, MarylandBCC.org, and get your tickets. Perfect. Thank you so much for joining us. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> All right. For more information on the Black Business Soiree and for business resources in the county, visit PGCEDC.com. And still ahead on CTV News, we have Bryce Parker with our Thursday sports page, and he's giving us the scoop on some local athletes. Bryce? Sports fans, get ready. We have local stars dominating in high school to local legends setting Olympic records. Don't change the channel. We'll be right back. It's getting stronger. Yeah, you know we couldn't protect them if it wasn't for our supporters. Well, maybe we should thank them? Thank you for being a friend. Travel down the road and back again. Your heart is true. You're a pal and a confidant. I'm not ashamed to say. I hope it always will stay this way. My head is up. 
Won't you stand up and take a bow? Thank you for being a friend. Thank you for being a friend. Thank you for being a friend. Thanks for being a friend. All right, sports fans, let's get right into some basketball. There's some local talent that you might want to get familiar with. His name is Caden Samuels, and he is already one of the best players in the country going into his junior year. And good news for basketball fans in the county, all you have to do to catch Samuels is to head over to Bishop McNamara this season. Samuels, the number one player in Maryland and the number 19 overall player in the country. And just this week, he received a scholarship offer from the back-to-back -back national champion, UConn Huskies. Standing at 6'5", Samuels can score from anywhere on the court. Just look at the lefty knock it down from three with the defender in his face. And he shows off the hops with a two-hand slam later in the game. Now, it's safe to say that the future is bright for Samuels as he holds 19 Division I offers and still has just two more seasons of play in high school basketball. Now, sticking with basketball, congratulations to Seat Pleasant's own Kevin Durant for passing Lisa Leslie on the all-time Olympic basketball scoring list for Team USA. Durant, who is already considered one of the most decorated men's basketball players of all time in the Olympics, just adds to the legend with this latest feat. No man or woman has more points than this 6'11 forward, and he also leads the men's national team in all-time rebounds, where he dethroned his former Olympic teammate Carmelo Anthony just this week. Now Team USA continues their dominance in this Olympics. Durant has the chance to become the first American man to win four Olympic basketball gold medals. Now pivoting to football, it's August, and if you're a fan like me, you can just hear those shoulder pads popping coming right around the corner. And just up the road in College Park, the Maryland Terrapins are gearing up to build on last season's success, where they ended their postseason with a win against the Auburn Tigers. And this season, they're looking to compete for a spot in the Big Ten title game. Yeah, and we're really, really excited about the, the young men. They've been here all summer working uh, their butts off, and, and, and we're really excited to see that uh, progress for us to take the next step. The Terrapins are projected to finish 11th in the Big Ten, and I just know that will add fuel to the fire for Coach Loxie's squad. And we end our sports page today with updates and the unexpected passing of former Ravens wide receiver Jacoby Jones. Jones, who was known for his electric catches, returns, and touchdown dances, suddenly passed last month in his New Orleans home. It was discovered that Jones died from hypertensive cardiovascular disease, a condition that develops in people with years of untreated high blood pressure. Jones, who was a Super Bowl champion and passed at just 40 years old, is not your typical victim of cardiovascular issues. He played professionally for 10 seasons, and the disease still captured his life as one of the most physically fit among us. Whether you remember Jones from making it to the NFL from an HBCU or for his two touchdowns that helped deliver the Ravens a Super Bowl victory, let's also use Jones as a reminder to be more mindful of our health and our lifestyles. And that wraps up our Thursday sports page. I'm Bryce Parker. CTV Sports. All right, Rice, thanks so much. Well, let's get a look at our three day weather forecast. Tonight we will have heavy thunderstorms and possible flooding, so stay off the roads if possible. Friday we have a high of 82, and those storms are sticking around but should clear up after 8 p.m. Saturday, turn up. It's going to be a nice and sunny with a high of 85 and low of 66. Sunday will be just as nice with a high of 84 to kick off the week. And let's get a final look at our community calendar this Saturday. Uh, the Marietta House Museum is hosting their 11th annual Wine and Jazz at Marietta event. A stroll through the booths of local Maryland wineries while listening to local jazz ensembles. This event takes place from 2 to 7 p.m. But for more information or tickets, contact 301-464-5291. That's all the time we have. Thanks so much for joining us for CTV News. Have a good night.